Happy Friday. My name is Ms. Katherine Johnson. I'm Mr. John Pfeffer. And we are the class of 2018 advisors, and we stand before you with our wonderful welcome. We would like to first and foremost say thank you to the superintendent and the board members who are here today and any and all other dignitaries that are here to join us. However, most importantly, we would love to welcome our parents and our graduates. Whenever I walk into this building, the sense of community is so noticeable. 
And that extends from, I mean, it certainly begins with your principal, Dr. Coe, but it goes throughout the entire building, from the teachers to the support staff. It is just amazing, and I just want to thank everyone who plays a role in that. Uh, officers uh, Bowman and Butler, I'm not sure where y'all are standing. <laughs> Students, I just want to tell you all, enjoy today, sit in the revelry, uh, you've earned it, it's incredible. Also keep in mind, it's going to get harder before it gets easier. But if you've gotten to this point, you will go as far as you want to go. Congratulations, Congratulations. our board members who are present. Of course, as has been already acknowledged, the incredible, amazing, and fantastic Dr. Davida Co. Brockington. Uh, to our, yes. <laughs> to our educators who are assembled, parents, family members, and friends. But most of all, but most of all, to the class of 2018, congratulations. <laughs> Up by Mr. Randall Potter, 
who is also an alumni from the class of 2008.
2018 for allowing me to speak on our behalf. And thank you to you guys for, you know, just allowing me to have this conversation with you. I'm a little nervous, like my stomach is sitting in my butt right now. But we're going to push through, and I'm going to get through. You know, I don't know about y'all, but it's been a long year, and I've come a long way. A long way. I promise. Hand to God, I almost failed calculus at least four times. I nearly missed about 10 of Ms. Wagg's final assignment deadline, and we only had seven of them. And trying to stay awake at AP Music Theory, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. But going through all that, it just made me sit back and think about how far I've come. Have you ever had one of those moments where you just had to sit back and think like, hey, where I'm at right now. Look at how I got here. You know, it's crazy thinking about how far we come, especially the class of 2018. I don't know if I talk, but it feels like just yesterday I was reading the house on Mango Street getting ready to be in this class. We've come a long way. But you know, sometimes it's, it's just good to think. It's good to just sit and think about things and just reflect and recollect and just think. You know, because if there's one thing that I learned over these four years is that the people who think create the world and everyone else just live. The people who think create this world and everyone else just lives in it. You know, just think about it. Let, let me give you an example, like MLK. Let's say MLK, right? Martin Luther King Jr. He lived in a society where people but it was unheard of for blacks and whites to even exist together. I mean, the law literally said that blacks and whites couldn't coexist. Martin Luther King asked himself, why do we have to live like this? And how can I change this? What can I do to change this? And because of that, we live in the world that he created. Let me give you another thing. Now, if you're in the instrumental music department, you know all about this man. We had the lead, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Jazz Dad, Season, one of them bus ride. You know what I'm talking about. Now, Robert T. Kiyosaki wrote the uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad series, and he lived in a community where he was being poor. Right? Everybody else around him had big money. His family was just a little poor family. So one day he asked his dad, Well, Dad, why are we poor? And then he thought about how he could change that, how he could change that perspective. So you know what he did? He went around to his neighbors and asked them for old used toothpaste tube. And at this time, the toothpaste tube was made out of copper. So he took the copper from inside those toothpaste tubes and used it to make money. He created the world that he wanted to live in, even though it was illegal. That's like. You cannot create money, that's illegal. But he created the world that he wanted to live in. See, the fact of the matter is, we all want to create our own world. You know, we all want a little cheddar, we all want to taste that bag. <laughs> we all want to live happy, we all want freedom. But most people only see what is and not what can be, and that's what sets us back. We accept what we're told and we never challenge the norms. And sadly, most people are unable to create the world they want to live in. And honestly, right now, I'm one of those people. You know, all of my life, I've lived in worlds that other people created. When I was a little girl, I, I went to the karate school down on my knee from, you know, the store front on my knee from, from 6 o'clock to 8.30 every night, sometimes 10. It was a world my grandfather created. On the weekend, I would perform with the Universal African Dance and Drama Ensemble. Woo! Another world my grandfather created. And then when it was time to come to high school, I lived in the band room, a world that my father created. And although I benefited greatly from those programs, I mean, it's the reason why I'm here today speaking to you. <coughs> While I was in those programs, I never asked myself why those programs run the way they were, how they created those programs to run like that, and what I could do to make those programs better. 
See, despite the fact that I was a child and I couldn't think for myself or I didn't have too much freedom to think for myself, I still never asked myself why these things were the way they were, how they become the way they were, or what I could do to make them better. But now I'm moving into, no, excuse me, we're moving into an age where we have full autonomy to determine the type of person we want to be and determine what we can do. We can determine whether we want to be the person who creates the world or the person who just lives in it. See, if we want to create the world, as of this day, we can no longer just accept any idea, any position, any circumstance. If we want to create the world that others live in, we have to challenge those ideas, create those positions, and overcome those circumstances. Because we're going into a place where external forces will play a big factor on how we proceed and how we succeed and how we get to the next place. But the truth of the matter is no external force can transform us into the type of person who creates the world. No college, no trade school, no job can do it. And from what I've heard, they try to help us be people who live deeper in the world than other people create. If we want to create the world, we have to change our perspectives, change our lifestyles, change our mindsets. Moving forward, whether it be to a college, a university, a trade school, a job, if you want to be a creator in the world, don't be the person that I've been these last three years. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Be the person I want to be. Be the person I dream to be. Be the person I will become. And let us all, Class of 2018, be creators of the world we want to live in. Thank you. Thank you, Karima. And now we will have uh, some words of encouragement from the Class Advisors and First one, Miss Catherine Johnson. Thank you. Well, thank you, Kareem with this.
as I have aged, uh, I've come across a few things and have heard had heard things from people and that have touched me, and I wanted to pass them on to you. So I'm going to say as many as I can before I start to cry. So, <laughs> so and, yeah, exactly. As you move on in your next four years and, and even further out, remember to work hard, but to also have fun. Uh, having fun will keep you young. Look at me. <laughs> the another piece of advice: laugh every day, even if it's at your own expense. Don't be so serious. Life is hard enough as it is, and again, make it fun. The next is love. Love your family. Love yourself. And find someone that will compliment you. You know, I, there, there used to be a, a statement, or I, I've heard a statement, behind every great man is an even better woman. Well, I, I want to just make a, a little addendum to that. And, uh, she shouldn't be behind you. You should be proud to have her next to you. And, and ladies, that goes for you as well. You shouldn't have to have a guy that you want to hang in the corner. He should be on your arm at all times. I know some of you are grown, or at least you think you are. <laughs> and you, you will find out in four very, in another four very short years, or if you're going to work on, on Monday, you will find out that your family will be very important, and no matter how hard it gets, someone will always be there. And I just want you to know that Ms. Johnson and I, are now a part of that family. And finally, and I, I actually heard this speech at a coach's conference once, and uh, it, it resonated with me, and I'm going to tell you. Live your life where you do things that make you proud. You should be able to look at the man in the mirror and be happy and proud of the person looking back. So I just want to finish saying that love you guys. And this is not the end, it is just the beginning.
and I don't usually um, get so emotional, but you know, when you watch kids grow the way I have, and the trials and tribulations that I know that many of you have been through, and you persevered and you stayed strong, I am so proud of you. So, I wrote my remarks, they're very brief. But it's important that I say to you, today you have reached a great milestone. A milestone that many don't reach. So you and your parents and your family members should be very proud of you. There are many more milestones that you are going to reach as a result of today, but I want you to stay strong. And I must say that we live in a world today that I believe is a lot more cruel than the world that I grew up in coming out of high school. A lot more racist, a lot more mean-spirited. So my remarks today, my remarks today are in reference to staying strong and leading with heart. Because so many people today think that leading with heart is a sign of weakness. But I'm here to tell you, it is not a sign of weakness. Always get off script. <laughs> it is not a sign of weakness. that we all have. Don't feed into petty jealousies that come into our hearts sometimes, wanting something that someone else has. Don't feed into that. Know that God has given you special gifts and talents, that only you are that uniquely you. No one else is you. God has already ordered your steps in the path that you must walk. You have to stay true to that path. Don't think that someone else's path is your path. Don't let anyone ever tell you that you aren't pretty enough. You aren't young enough. You aren't old enough. Maybe you aren't black enough. Maybe you aren't brown enough. Or maybe you just aren't good enough. Well, I'm here to tell you today, don't ever let anyone's words break you down to dust. words want to cut you down, send a flood to drown them out. Be brave, always be thankful, and lead with your heart. Tell anyone who tries to put you down, let it come, fire away, because you will not let shame sink in. Why? Because you are truly glorious. Make no apologies at all. Remember, the world we live in, again, is a tough one. And I have to say, because too many people sit back silently, when you see children in cages with blankets covering them, laying on the floor, little brown children, 
You have to remember the world we live in is a cruel one at this time. And that's why it's so important to me to say to all of you, lead with your heart, lead with compassion. And I want to say to all of you, don't let anyone put you down because you really are the best because here comes the class of 2018. <laughs>
And I was sitting there crying and moving. My daughter said, Mommy, why are you crying? I said, this is so crazy. I mean, this song, and I came back and this farmer and I were talking about it. I said, we have to sing this at graduation because it's so important that you understand you are beautiful. And it's you. Don't ever let anyone tell you that you are not good enough, no matter where you are in your life. So that is extremely important that you have that self-confidence and that self-esteem because constantly throughout your life, I even still get it today, people will tell you that you just aren't good enough. Well, I'm here to tell you again, yes, you are. your diplomas today. Ooh. And I would like the board members and Superintendent Buhana Ford and our Deputy Superintendent, Ms. McCombs, to please come up. And Ms. Blackshear, Ms. Chirac, Ms. Bell, and our other board members who are with us today, please come up. And then I'm going to ask all of our faculty members to please come up so that our students can shake your hand, those people who who've really been in your lives for the past six years, making a difference in your life, become, being parents to some of you when you needed a parent, being someone to lean on when you needed someone to lean on. So please, teachers, if you would please stand up in line so that the students can shake your hand. Thank you. And at this time, I need our graduates to please stand.
Jesus. I just can't wait. Yes, I love the surprise visit. So now moving on to the next item in our program. We will have a special musical selection by our vocal and instrumental music major students. Since the sixth grade, her love for the arts has been evident. 
when the school first opened, then as a sixth grader, she starred as Dorothy in the Canvas production of The Wiz. She has remained faithful, singing and traveling with the concert choir, all of the musicals, and maintaining not good grades, but great grades. Her commitment and passion for the arts is undeniable. It is with great pleasure that the vocal department of Creative Arts Morgan Village Academy present the Outshine Award to Ms. Belmaris Garcia. Our next spotlight. She was accepted to Spelman College, Barnard and Smith College, Ithaca College, and Wellesley Universities. At Camden, we can dream big and achieve great things. The Dr. Marion Weir STEM Scholarship, $1,000. Women of the Dream Scholarship, $3,000. Spare Chain Scholarship, $500. Unique Positive Crew Scholarship, $500. Cooper Medical Scholarship, $2,000. Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated Scholarship, $1,500. Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated Cargo Epsilon Chapter, $1,000. Delta Sigma Theta Sorority South Jersey Alumni Chapter, $1,500. Delta Sigma Theta Sorority New Jersey Garden City Alumni Chapter, $1,500. All of those scholarships were earned by our salutatorian. <laughs> Isaiah Izzy Brown. 
Cecilia Brown Cannon personally. Uh, I had the privilege of knowing Dr. Brockington's father. Uh, I'm a retired educator from the school district of Philadelphia. I was a principal in Philadelphia. And Dr. Bill Brockington's father was a teacher um, in Philadelphia. And I also know her mother. Um, she's also a member of my sorority, Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority. So I am extremely, extremely happy that every single year she invites us to come and make a donation. I want to ask the Dickinson uh, brothers to stand up as well. I am, I am just so proud. Um, whenever we have asked them to come and perform for us, they are there. And I, I just want to thank the school. I want to thank the parents. Um, this has been a very emotional graduation. I've come to many, many, many of your graduations. Um, and this has been a very emotional graduation. I just want each and every one in this room to remember that you are the hope and the future of the slaves who built America. You are the hope. You are our future. Vote every single opportunity you get. Your vote. And I hope each one of you that's turning 18 will be at that voting booth in November to make a difference in this country. Thank you. I'd like to introduce Ms. Peggy Chris, also a longtime friend and family member of the of Arts Morgan Village Academy. Greetings, everyone. I love coming to this school because every time I come here, whether it was on South 6th Street or in this beautiful facility, I see potential, I hear beautiful, beautiful music, and I always leave re-inspired, especially after a, a day like today. Uh, one of the things our family foundation does in, in memory of our youngest son, Jonathan, is we give um, scholarships, and um, we'd like to give three here today, and the tradition with our scholarship is each student, and there are 42 signatures on this guitar right now from the last 12 years, many students from this school as well as several others around the country. Um, the student receiving the award signs this with their name, and in what we have in the end here is our son's signature guitar. We're very proud of this. Obviously, that was his instrument. Anyway, I would like three people to come up to the stage. One young man graduated last year and has finished his first year at Whittier College, Brandon Ramos.
you know, we've got some names on this guitar. Let me see. Arnetta Johnson, Lawrence Galloway. They're going to be really famous one day. Think of them like this guitar. Hi, everyone. Um, 
today's program, we are going to ask all of the players of 2018 to come join us on stage and sing. Thank you so much as our graduates enroll. Thank you.